your host, Cynthia Thompson. If you watch my show regularly, a few weeks ago, we had a conversation about Black Lives Matter. But, you know, my guest here beside me said all lives matter, which is true. And we want to keep this conversation going. But if you don't remember who was on my show from the last time, I'm going to let them go around and do some sales. And let's start with you. I'm Dr. Honeycutt. I'm Wanda. I'm Kit Coble. Vivian Simmons. So the last time we talked about this, we talked about the shootings that have been going on, not just in the South, but in the North. I haven't heard of any out West of police officers shooting black kids, black men. Have you heard any out West? Well, kid? one that sticks out that's been in the uh, media rotation is Ezel Ford in Los Angeles. Huh. And he was shot on the street by, by officers and there hasn't been too much disclosure on that case, so um, it's not in the forefront. But uh-huh. he was shot around the same time as um, Crawford was, the guy in Walmart who had the fake gun. Around the same time, it was about sometime early, uh, sorry, late last year in December. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's mostly been happening on the East Coast. On the East Coast, yeah. It's, it's, so we know. Yes. Okay. So well, it happens all over, but the ones that get media attention have been uh-huh. in the South and in the um, on the Eastern Seaboard. So why do you think that's so, ladies? Because we're on Eastern Standard Time? <laughs> I mean, it shouldn't Sunrise matter, should it? I don't know. I think probably the South is probably still more sensitive to racial uh-huh. profiling and, and anything dealing with, you know, black versus white because of slavery and, and the mm-hmm. last 400 years of oppression and coming out of that. And mm-hmm. so, and like, you know, everybody over towards the West is probably more liberal or more free feeling. Mm-hmm. They seem to be okay with carrying guns. If you think about Texas, everybody carries a gun. They even have tanks. Um, you know, but yeah. you don't hear about people getting shot over there. And, you know, if you think about that, a lot of the, the um, younger children, I know children that have some family members that when they were little kids, they were white and well mixed, but they got guns for Christmas and a bow and arrow, you know, and it was like that was a natural occurrence. And I know some students now that for Christmas, this past Christmas, they were given guns, like real guns, rifles, that they would go with their parents out on the ATVs in the woods, go hunting. But it seems okay. But, you know, like Kick was saying earlier, if a black male has a toy gun, he gets shot. Mm-hmm. So I'm just curious, why is that such a huge disparity there? Yes, I didn't even know that. Well, but, but I, I think what would... And I think uh, our ancestors always taught our children uh, about firearms and, and hunting and, and guns. And and so, and, and I think that there are still, my son hunts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I cannot for the life of me fathom how he got into this. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I will admit that he, he did do some rabbit hunting um, with my husband uh-huh. early on. But uh, he hunts now, but but now when, when he does go hunting, it's a novelty mm-hmm. for a black man to hunt. Mm-hmm. We, we, huh. don't, we, 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 we don't hunt for sport anymore. Uh-huh. And I think for a lot of people, hunting and guns is, is, is a lot about sport. It's, it's not always about a, a weapon to use mm-hmm. to, to, to kill somebody, which it can be used for that, as, as is so many other things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that really is not always the intent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so, uh, and, and, and my, my sons did get uh, BB guns. I mean, that's how, we, we all saw Christmas Story. Yes, you made me want a BB yeah, gun when I was a kid. Everybody wanted a BB gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and so the, the thing of it is that you have to remember, I, I think we need to remember about guns is it's also part of the, the culture of the country. That's true. And so, uh, but we're in now, we're, we, we, we're, we're using human beings, the human beings are the people being preyed mm-hmm. upon mm-hmm. now. I yeah. think we see a lot more of that now than mm-hmm. it used to be. Or, or is it? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I think now we have a 24-hour life cycle of news. Mm-hmm. This is true. And, yeah. and so everything is reported. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and, and, and Kit, you can talk about this, about the, uh, the study that was done of, of all of us, all of us black people who were hanged. Yes, that's a different. That, that was the hunting, yes. the prevalent hunting exactly. back in the day. Exactly. These are what? modern day yes. lynchings. Like that's mm-hmm. with yes. a lot of people, like Dr. Chris Wilson and a lot of um, Umar Johnson, Dr. Smalls. They talk. They said that these um, these killings by police officers or unarmed men is just an offshoot or psychological trauma that's carried to the next generation. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at pictures of lynchings, mm-hmm. that's the same thing. And people went out 
hunting black men mm -hmm. and they weren't hunting criminals they were hunting people that they thought were uppity that people that they thought were uh a uh, a threat to um, a white woman's purity because uh -huh. of, you know Emmett Till was killed for supposedly whistling on a white woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They drug him behind a um, a car, and then uh, Mr. Bird was drugged behind a pickup truck not too many years ago. That's I mean, true. I, I remember I, that. I forgot which state it was in, but it was in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was drugged behind. So we see that these things persist, but it's all about how much media attention it gets mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. Not every one of these killings that happen are reported, and I, I dig really deep ah. into to, to newspapers and, and internet articles, and I'm surprised about there's only about 10 percent of unarmed black killings by white police officers that are actually reported and covered in the news. Mm -hmm. If you do your research, you will find many, and, I'm, and I think that they say we're averaging around 2.2 or 2.5 per week, and that's unarmed, not even. Um, people down in police custody, like just uh -huh. what just happened with Freddie Gray, because he—I mean—he broke his back because they didn't—they didn't properly secure this man, mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. the same as you know shooting or killing Pretty that much. person. I mean, that, they, they stopped at three places and didn't give him medical care. Mm -hmm. That shows a, a blatant disregard for our lives. Mm -hmm. But before they put him in the family, like his back was broke. But, but even before that, they ran after the man because he made eye contact. That was oh. I mean, that, that, there was no justification. He was too mm -hmm. uppity. He, 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 too he, uppity. He, he, he made he, eye contact. That's, that's persisting. Those, those, wow. those, you know, those, those um, attitudes persist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, I really haven't seen a lot of um, anybody showing how many deaths by like black on black crime just in general, mm -hmm. as far as like unarmed or, you know, what's going on compared to the officer killings it's like I, I would be curious to see exactly how many of those are going on that we don't know about you know because people only post the ones that are officer related but what about the ones that are done in our community well it's a lot I, I, yeah. statistically it's high mm -hmm. um, we, we know about black on black crime we, mm -hmm. we, we, we live it mm -hmm. we see it I mean it, so much so I think now that we, 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 we hear it and we kind of move on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know it's, it's, there's a certain callousness about it now, and it shouldn't be that mm -hmm. way. But I think we, we, we're, we've we become kind of like hardened to it. Oh, okay. Because it doesn't affect our everyday lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we, we live in different communities, and, and so I think we, we, we hear this, and we go, oh, that that's really bad and then we keep it moving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, yeah, but I wonder uh, if people started standing behind that and protesting every time that happened would it really you know it's like it's almost like those lives don't matter those lives are people any lives you know like I'll say all lives matter but it's mm -hmm. like if we took the time to show and showcase every single life that was of a person that was murdered um, whether they were armed unarmed it's like what difference would that make a huge difference in the way people perceive these officer killings because then it wouldn't you really wouldn't have time to see the officer killings standing out because it would be a constant this person was murdered this person was murdered this person was murdered you know it's like mm -hmm. then we can really see oh my god this is like an epidemic well yeah. well that what if you remember back in uh, 1989 during the self-destruction uh -huh. movement they were um, uh, the rap community was addressing um, black on black crime mm -hmm. but we lately have realized that that is a misnomer because um, most people who are murdered are murdered in the communities in which they live and the people they live around. So mm -hmm. there's a such thing as a black on black crime and that's put to the forefront of a lot of people's psyche. But there's also white on white crime oh, yeah. because 89% mm -hmm. of um, blacks are killed by other blacks. But in the white community, 94% of whites are killed by other whites. So what's the bigger epidemic? And the blacks ah. are the, the smaller minority also. Yeah, smaller so our percentages, minority. if you compare it they're, you know, to the actual numbers, yeah. would really be small. It would really be small, yes. And so a lot of times we, we um that that's a that 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 narrative of the black on black crime we should we should we should concentrate on that before um, officer killings. The difference in the that paradigm is that it's an abuse of authority. And, and, and whenever mm -hmm. it comes to, um, like, say, two people on the street, they just kill each other, or mm -hmm. just, you know, they kill each other and they, if they don't have standing ground laws in or castle doctrine inside of their, their um, state, that's, there's no abuse of power there. It's really, like, really just mutual combat, and then it turns into murder, manslaughter, or whatever. But when it becomes a person, it's like hunting. Um, it's not a sport. 
if one person doesn't know they're playing the game. Mm-hmm. You know, so, ah. so these guys are, they, they, they get stopped by the police and they're like, okay, well, it's not fair because you have the gun, I have to obey your authority, and if I do something to you, I'm a cop killer. But if you shoot me, you can just say that I was lunging for your gun. It's justified because mm-hmm. I was scared. And a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of times people don't understand that the reason why these officers aren't getting indicted is because when it comes to cops, um, all they have to prove is that they were in fear of their lives. Not that there was a weapon present or that um, that person was intending to use a weapon. It's just that intrinsic fear. So at what point do we say that if, if you were born or raised to um, think that you're afraid of black people, every killing of a black man will be justified at that point. You know what I'm saying? So, I wanted to ask you as a black male, how, you know, when you hear about these things, when you wake up in the morning, another, you know, guy has been killed. Mm-hmm. Innocently, how does that make you feel? Well, um, luckily, I, I feel lucky that I'm not so young as to be perceived as a threat. I can control the way I dress because I'm a grown. I have a good job. But what about these kids who are trapped in these communities, who are um, are, are kind of I don't hate to use the word slaves, but slaves to fashion trends, the hand me downs, mm-hmm. to to having to wear a hoodie because they can't afford a coat. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can't control your environment or you can't control um, the way you're being perceived or control where you're coming from or anything, I think that I feel really sorry or very, um, I, I feel saddened by the fact that some kids, when they get to a situation they and they can see that, that, that anger in that cop's eyes mm-hmm. and they realize that I'm going to do everything I was told. I'm going to say yes, sir, no, sir, whatever, whatever. And then they something happens, they still get... They still get shot, you know what I'm saying? They still get, you know, thrown in the back of a police van or something like that. It, every time I hear it, and I hate to be so desensitized to it, that I keep thinking it doesn't surprise me. There's another one. There's the statistic that, you know, that num- the numbers are going up. Mm-hmm. And um, I, instead of me being saddened by it now, I'm trying to search it to make sure that I can find um, ways to equip younger people into learning to control their image, to realize that, being black isn't about getting that face tattoo. Being black isn't about being uh, a thug. Being a black isn't about um, raising your voice to cops to let them know that you don't care about what they do to you because they hold the they hold all the cards. Um, I just think we need to redefine what our young people think of as blackness and make sure it's not some combative, suggestive, hypersexualized, just ratchet thing. And they realize they can be black and wear a tie. They can be black and speak properly. Not not to, you know, we, like, all black people have two languages they speak. Mm-hmm. They speak black and they speak interview. You know what I'm saying? We can change it. We, mm-hmm. we, can, we can change for, for the moment. But what about those kids who are marginalizing themselves? Face tattoos, neck tattoos, trying to live up to a stereotype to be accepted by their peers. But when they deal with the world. It's a hostile. It becomes a hostile place. Wow. Kick, mm-hmm. I think this is a good time for a break. <laughs> because then when we come back, I want us to talk about what happened in Charleston, South Carolina. Because this was an adult man that was shot by the police. But we're going to take a break. We're going to talk about that when we get back. Okay? Get it. Back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. Now, before we went on break, we were talking about how police officers see some black men especially our young men, as a threat. But just recently, we had a killing in South Carolina where the man was stopped for a traffic stop. I don't know the whole story. I know you can help me with it. (laughs) So why do you think that happened to him? Because in my opinion, I don't see where he would have been a threat to the police officer. Well, he was he was a threat, but he was a threat to that man's authority or his Ah. um, privilege. um, Uh Because it goes back to, um, we have to look at what KRS-One called um, police. He uh-huh. said it moved from the word overseer to officer. And that's mm. what oh. they ride horses, you know, they, they police people. Because remember, oh, we didn't have a police okay. force in America before the slaves were freed. We didn't have large prisons or anything like that. Uh-huh. The, the police were put there to protect property and to make sure that folks um, complied with white laws and Jim Crow laws and things like that. Uh-huh. So um, this this guy, a lot of officers, if you look the way they treat black folks at, um, versus white folks. Because, look, they are complaining about the, um, Baltimore, the rioting. Right. But they didn't complain when Kentucky was burning over a sports game. Those people weren't rioting. They were just um, they were just ah. having fun. But we're, when, we, we're, when we 
riot and protest for our rights. We're thugs. We're we're rioters. All that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. we got to pay attention to the way the media portrays us. But back to Walter Scott, I think that the reason why he shot him is he's like, how dare he turn and run from me? He wasn't uh, he wasn't a murderer or bank robber or a rapist or anything. Mm-hmm. He just had some child support warrants, mm-hmm. and that warranted death. And, and he wasn't running eyes. that fast. He wasn't going no, that fast. He, he was. I mean, he could have tricked him. He could have went through the trick him. But, but I mean, when I saw the clip, yeah. it's like the officer literally took a stance, like he was at target practice, mm-hmm. and just fired off. And I mean, you don't need that many shots to not make a man. Not one shot, not two, but eight. Eight. Yeah. Oh, wow. eight. eight. Yeah. In and the he, back. Yeah, he was not running that fast. No. And then it's like once he was on the ground, it's kind of like to me when I looked at it, the officer didn't seem concerned. It's kind of like yeah. oh, he didn't give him any immediate medical hit. Um, he didn't give him CPR. The other officer that came up didn't give him CPR. And he also came and dropped Pop the something. taser. Yeah. I say something, but I'm just going to put it out yeah. there. A taser, because mm-hmm. he, he knew that he was going to say he he went for my taser or my mm-hmm. gun or whatever, and that b- became the initial report. But then when we seen the video, that was all, that was all a lie. Mm-hmm. And, and even the lie about them giving him CPR. Yes, mm-hmm. they didn't give mm-hmm. him any. No, mm-hmm. they just sort of looked at him and checked. Yeah. They finally checked his pulse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like, oh no, what they they ran up and handcuffed his hands behind his back. That was the yeah, first that thing is the oh. first thing they did. Yeah. dead. How yeah. why? That's, yeah. that, that, that's what they did. Yeah. So, so do you think it's a good thing that we have all these gadgets where we can video? tape it but it seems that since we have it the police they really don't care well we got a uh, and another thing that I want to speak about about the Eric Garner situation that it, it parallels with that uh-huh. um, there's a push now to have officers having um, cameras. cameras now mm-hmm. and um, a but lot they of they can turn them off yeah the black the black they can turn them off they can turn them off and they're supposed <laughs> to turn them on during traffic stops but what um, a lot of p- f- folks are saying and it's we have to pay attention to this is that since the Eric Garner thing, when that was taped, the whole thing, he, he said he couldn't breathe. They, um, he wasn't committing a crime and everything. Let's, Would those cameras work? Would they be listened to? Let's refresh our viewers on what happened to Eric. Well, he was breaking up mm-hmm. a fight in it's New York. In New York. Yeah. yeah, and then he was selling, supposedly selling untaxed cigarettes, oh, and okay. um, the police came to ask him, you know, his ID and everything, and um, I, he didn't make any sudden movements they just got behind him and choked him Mm -hmm. him out yeah Mm. and he said i can't breathe and that's what everybody has on their shirts now he said he couldn't Mm -hmm, breathe mm -hmm. and um he he died of cardiac arrest Mm -hmm. you can hear him saying i can't breathe over and over again and you were about to say something about the cameras thing yeah so um a a lot of politicians are pushing for body cameras some people are trying to veto those the governors are trying to veto those laws in certain places but um the eric garner case shows us that even when we have hard evidence Maybe it, it won't be listened to. That those cops weren't indicted, and it, they they used illegal chokehold, which was on on tape. Um, he he didn't pose a threat. He wasn't in commission of a felony. He didn't even have to, by law, show him mm-hmm. his ID. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. those cameras that they're saying are going to solve the situation, Eric Garner blows that whole theory out of the water. Well. There's cameras all over the place. I mean, if you think about every city that I drive through, there's cameras on every single corner, like the stoplights, the, you know, at the crosswalks. There's cameras everywhere. So I think if they needed evidence, the you see, and it's true, the more you don't see. True, because I I used to work with a company where we install those cameras, and like you're saying, there are ways where you can't even see, you don't even know it's there, and it's yeah. doing it at night during the daytime. Yeah. So there, I believe there's footage available now that mm-hmm. they could get if they really want it, mm-hmm. and even with some of the cops that have the cams in their cars we've seen where the police officer will turn it off or strategically walk or take the you know person to the side mm-hmm. so you truly can't see what's going on and then they'll come back into view mm-hmm. at the end. It's like, so even with the body cameras, they can turn them off. Mm-hmm. Well, what, one of the things that's happening here in North Carolina is the state is working on some laws as to how those cameras, the body cameras can be used or viewed, not, not so much used, but viewed. And and so uh, and, and 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 the state right now is proposing that y- you have to have permission from a judge to view those tapes. Mm-hmm. So, so I useless. mean, well, it, it, so it, so on, on one hand, you, you know, we, we here in Charlotte are saying, well, th- this is what we want because obviously uh, we, we've made the purchase of, of of the cameras, we've made these investments, but then you have the the people on the state side mm-hmm. saying, you know what, 
Uh, yeah, okay, you can have those candles. We're going to make sure you don't see them. Red tape. Red tape. Start red tape and bureaucracy. Red tape and exactly. Wow. exactly, to block mm -hmm. it. Mm. So, and, and so then we're right back mm -hmm. in that box again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, unless you find some judge who, and, 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 and the thing of it is that you also had to remember about North Carolina is judges are elected. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, one of the other things that the state is proposing is that uh, now your uh, political designation be put on the ballot so mm -hmm. everybody would know whether you're mm -hmm. uh, independent or Democrat or Republican mm -hmm. and, 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 and to make it more partisan instead of it being bipartisan. They, they want it to be very partisan. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it, that there are other things underfoot as to we, we think it's wide open. We, we, we're, we're, we think we're living one way, mm -hmm. but then when, when you get down into the weeds, or no, not even having to get in the weeds, if you pay attention to what's going on, it's, it's, we, we have so many things working against us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Political level. Put yes. On the political, political level, level. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. yes. So tell me, you all, we've been talking about the crimes against black folks that the police have been shooting our young people. What do you think the solution is to stop all of this? Or will it ever stop? Can we do transplants? Heart transplants, <laughs> mind transplants? <laughs> I don't know, but one thing I think about too, like our children now, eight and 10 year olds do not look like eight and 10 year olds and you can't change that. Yeah. Like I know some 10 year olds that are almost as tall as me and I'm six two. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the the body structure has changed as well. So that might be why they seem more threatening yeah. to police officers because, you know, when I was younger, I was still tall, but not as many children were very, very tall. They were more like normal kid size. So I don't know if that plays a part in it as well, because now mm -hmm. they're becoming a threat earlier because their size seems bigger. Mm -hmm. So they look like adults. They look, they have the muscle. They're they're tall. They're built. You know, their faces look like grown men. Some of them have hair. You know, so maybe that's creating that threat so early, and that's why we're seeing officers shooting younger and younger children because the children aren't looking like children anymore. Even the ah. girls. We're not gonna go there, but you know. But so I mean, maybe that's part of it too. Uh huh. I really think, like you talked about, body image. You know, I think that is like a really big focus because, like, if I look on the news, they'll talk about somebody being robbed or shot. And the first, you know, you look, it's a black male with dreads. Most of the, a lot of the times, not all the time, but a lot of the times. And now every guy with dreads, they're, you know, judged by the, you know, yeah. they always judge the outer yeah. side, you know. So image, image, Im image to me mm -hmm. is, is a, a whole lot. But I know some friends I, that cut I, their dress because I, I, I of that. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's bigger than that. I, I think uh, it, you can be clean cut. It does not matter. It's the fact that you're black. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so they see skin color before they see anything else. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the one thing you, you, you cannot hide. We, mm -hmm. we are what we are. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, to, to, to me, I, I, I think it's in the psychology. I don't know mm -hmm. how you change psychology. Because you know, when 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 it's been bred that black is bad, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, how how do you how do you change that? Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I, I think, don't know. I think that a lot of times we say we have to spend time with people that aren't like us to to learn them or to 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 make people a little, I guess more sensitive to our plight. But um, what I've seen is that. I've I've known people who white guys who hung around black people all their lives and they um you would think that they would grow to be these very inclusive people but as they get to a certain age and they they have to rely on their white privilege to get ahead they become just as racist as the ones who hung around nothing but rednecks and white folks you know what I'm saying but then I've seen those people who hang around rednecks and white folks in their family and then they spend their lives trying to stave off that image and they become very inclusive they they don't want to be like what they saw their parents to be so i think that the the only way that's going to happen that we're going to change people's minds about who we are is for us to change ourselves not to whiten ourselves up or to um or submit to conformity i think that we should tell people that we need to redefine 
what blackness is. The dreads mm. and stuff. If you know that people ain't gonna give you a job because you got dreads, don't accent that by putting a tattoo on your face or getting a tattoo on your neck <laughs> right. or putting a tattoo on your hand or something, you know, just something like that. Right. If you know to understand how you're gonna be perceived, maybe you should do something that would counteract that. So, because I know this boy who just got into like all these Ivy League schools. Mm -hmm. I saw his picture, he had a hat on and long dreads and I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Maybe he's going to redefine how people look at people with dreads. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I think that we shouldn't have to conform because the dread thing doesn't mean you're a criminal. It originally was a Rastafarian mm -hmm. thing and before it was that, it was in Africa as a way to keep our hair neat. Mm -hmm. But the media has, like you said, they they showing all these brothers that look like criminals supposedly in white eyes and putting them on the screen. So that becomes emblazoned in people's heads that those are criminals. So next time I see the person with dreads, I'm going to move away from them. But mm -hmm. because of the Obama effect, I think that in the psyche of white folks a lot of times now, they don't um, fear the thug anymore. They fear the, clear, the clean cut brother because they feel like that person's a threat to their livelihood and their job. So. I think if we focus to get down to the very, very base and focus on being humans and rebuilding the human race, supporting each other, I think that's where it could start. You know, instead of, I know we cannot get away from black, white, Asian, Hispanic, whatever, but at the end of the day, we are all humans. It's like, and I think people forget that. Mm -hmm. And they just look at the skin and try to put people into a little box or category. But we are all humans sharing this planet, and we have got to learn how to cohabitate. If we don't, we're going to kill off the planet and ourselves, and then we won't have to worry about no more. <laughs> <laughs> it, won't it won't be a problem. It'll be non existent. Mm. Yeah, that, that's true. I, I see what you're saying um, about that. But we have to teach people to respect the humanity in other people. Because a lot of times, I think Dr. James Small says that um, we've always been, or oh, Dr. Clark said that we've always been hospitable to strangers. When we, back in Africa and things like that before we were um, colonialized. But Dr. Small, James Small says that um, we shop with people. We, we, we want to cohabitate with other people. But we have to demand that people respect our humanity. Because we are very humanly, or hu we, we're very humanity-based when it comes to people that aren't like us. We want people to know how we live and show, and show them our subtle nuances and teach them how to dance like us and teach them to talk like us and teach them to like the things that we like. But a lot of people don't show that same humanity toward us. A lot of people won't bring us mm. in because they've been conditioned to think that underneath all of our Nice, our niceties and our pleasantries that we have this deep dark soul that wants to take things from you like that's what a lot of folks feel like a lot mm -hmm. of white, like mm -hmm. if you talk to a lot of folks they just don't trust black people and they mm -hmm. don't even know why because it's been conditioned into them in an early mm -hmm. age. again for coming and talking about this we can talk on and on and on about this subject but unfortunately we are out of time again so you all must come back again so we can keep this conversation going and maybe we can find an answer okay and I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my show, A Better You, here on Public Access 21, every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thank you so much, you.